Hey, it's Rachel. In today's video, I am gonna talk about 10 different science-based ways for you to reduce stress. Now, in last week's video, I mentioned that reducing stress played a huge part in putting my fibromyalgia in remission. The thing is, what you find stress relieving, I might not. And what I find stress relieving, you might not. So you really have to try as many things as possible until you find the one that works for you. So in today's video, we are going to go through 10 of them. Try one, try them all. One of them's gotta work, right? Technique number one is the tense and release. It's also known as the progressive muscle relaxation. You've probably tried this before, but it's when you tense and release muscles throughout your whole body. Now you can just do your hands or what's more common is you go from your feet all the way up to your head. So in other words, you tense your feet, relax them, tense your calves, relax them, you get the point. You go all the way up and this is actually a science-based relaxation technique when a doctor realized that if you could train your body to feel the difference between a tensed muscle and a relaxed muscle that you would actually have more control over when you're tense and when you're not. The second thing for you to try is yoga. And if you have fibromyalgia and you just heard me say that, you're probably rolling your eyes because I'm sure I'm not the first person to say, have you tried yoga? But there's actual science behind it. There are tons of studies that have looked at using yoga to treat depression, stress, fibromyalgia. In fact, one study that I read said just two months of yoga reduced stress significantly in every single participant. And there are tons of different types of yoga for you to try. I think Hatha, right? Tell me if I'm mispronouncing that. Hatha yoga is normally like the relaxation one. I find it boring and it does not reduce my stress whatsoever. But Vinyasa yoga does. I like more of an upbeat movement to my workouts. So don't just try one. Try all different styles. Try all different teachers because everybody teaches a little bit different. But see if there's one that works for you. But sometimes we're just in too much pain to do something physical like yoga. So that's when you try number three, which is meditation. And again, there's science behind trying meditation to reduce stress. One particular study that I looked at, all the participants had general anxiety disorder. And after participating in meditation for a few weeks, the stress hormone was actually lower in the groups that did meditating versus those who didn't. Now, number four is going to be kind of controversial, but it's join a religion. Now, you don't necessarily have to pick one religion or another. You can just be spiritual. You don't have to try this one at all. But there is some science to show that being part of a church or a temple or any other form of religious group has actually been shown to help with depression and anxiety. And I'm kind of not surprised. Like giving up control, having hope, being with other people who also are worshiping with you, it, it kind of makes sense to me. So if this one speaks to you, maybe give that one a try. But maybe religion isn't your thing. And so number five is listening to music. It seems so simple, but there are studies that actually show that listening to music can help reduce stress. So the next time you're in a stressful situation, maybe you're at work or you're cleaning the house, whatever it is, try listening to music and seeing if it makes a difference. Again, it kind of makes sense. You escape with music. You get out of your head because you're concentrating on something else. So try music. Now, number six has personally worked for me. It might not work for you depending on how sensitive your skin is with fibromyalgia, but number six is get a massage. 
I personally really like the deep tissue, like get it all the fascia kind of massage. I find that super relaxing and honestly not super painful. Give it a try. There is science that says a massage can be relaxing but it might not be that way for everybody depending on you know if you can afford it and how sensitive you are but if you can afford it it's another option number seven is art therapy or drawing now i'm sure you've heard of this one before because all of those adult coloring books were super popular but did you know that it's actually backed by science. I read a literature review that said those who participated in art therapy, drawing, making something out of clay, actually saw a huge reduction in their stress. Now number eight you've probably also heard of and that's journaling. It is scientifically proven that journaling reduces stress. You know this, I know this, so why don't we do it? Why don't we do it? Why don't you do it? Grab a journal, write down five, 20 minutes a day, whatever works for you. Get your feelings out on paper because it actually works. You know it works, so do it. Now, number nine is something that has personally worked for me and that's going for walks outside. Now, we know that exercise helps reduce stress, right? Exercise gives you endorphins, endorphins make you happy, therefore you're not stressed. So walking outside is a form of exercise and therefore should work. But there's actual studies that say walking outside has a bigger effect on your stress than walking inside on a treadmill. So if you live in a place where you can do that, where maybe it's not freezing cold or super hot, where you can actually go for a walk outside, I definitely recommend giving it a try. And you can pair that with a few other things that I've mentioned in this video, such as listening to music or meditating. But if you have tried all of these things, all nine of these things, and none of them are working, number 10 uh, actually is two parts. Number 10 is taking a supplement. And there are two in particular that are supposed to help with stress. The first one is ashwagandha. And that's actually something that I have been taking regularly and I do think it helps. There is science that say that ashwagandha, which is an herbal adaptogen, I think it's called an adaptogen, is supposed to help with stress. And so I've been taking that every night and I have noticed a difference. And the second supplement I'm going to include here because everybody recommends it and there is some science to back it up. I personally didn't notice a difference you might and that is magnesium taking a magnesium supplement is supposed to help reduce your stress now i looked at the science and it's a little iffy it basically is saying that those who are stressed have lower magnesium levels so if we raise the magnesium levels they'll be less stress i think that's kind of a leap but give it a shot it might work for you plus magnesium also helps with bowel movements. So if you're constipated, take magnesium. The other thing with magnesium is it's supposed to help you sleep, which is something that I mentioned in last week's video about how sleep was super important to putting my fibromyalgia into remission. So if you're interested in learning more about how I was personally able to fix my insomnia, hit that notification bell because next week I am going to go over why sleep is so important to those with fibromyalgia and what you can do to get more of it. But until then, you can check out some of these videos here and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.